it as a prophet. But he wanted to carry the burdens of the Ummah of the Most Beloved One on the Day of Judgment. And he said, Ya Rabbi, make me to become one of them. I will give up my prophethood, the highest distinction and station that Allah can ever give to a human. He says, I give this up to become just one of them. The reason is, he's saying, I want to lift their burdens from them. Allah granted to him. Nasreddin Hoja, forever now, until the day of judgment, whenever you tell one single story, and he has thousands, one story, everyone from east to west, north to south, believer or unbeliever, they'll forget all their problems and they start laughing. Until judgment day, he's carrying some of our burdens. May Allah bless him, inshallah. Those holy ones they're going to come back to when the time is near to fight in that big war that is coming. World is preparing. Heavens they are preparing. Mankind is sleeping. Mirid sleeping. Fighting with one another. Mirid sleeping. Running after the dunya. Mirid is sleeping in Gaflet. Mirid is sleeping. Uh, having strange ideas here and there. Don't be. Understand that your enemy is always out there to trap you. He's always out there to trick you. No one is escaping from this. Not you, not me. Our work is always to see where the enemy is going to trick us and not to fall into that trick. Not to say, I didn't know. Especially in this time for anyone to say, I didn't know. to know how they're laying the traps, to avoid that. We're never telling you to declare war against the shaitan or to declare war against the dunya, no. But to know how the shaitan and dunya, they're going to trick you. So walk carefully. Walk carefully, don't use your own head too. It's when you use your own head, usually you will fall and you will step on that landmine and it will blow up in your face. We are very lucky because we have our Shaykh thinking about us, for us, 24 hours. This is what is called Sunnah. That Holy Prophet ﷺ, he has already laid the way. Our akal too, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created it. It doesn't come from us, it doesn't belong to us. You understand? Intelligence doesn't come from us, it doesn't belong to us. Ya Alim, Allah is the one who has created intelligence and His, his name is there. The one who has knowledge. Shaitan also claims he has knowledge. The ego also claims he has knowledge. The dunya says, I have knowledge too. Your desires say, my knowledge is above everyone. Don't get fooled. The duty of a believer is not to get fooled. You have a guide, follow him. Some pretending to follow. You can be pretending one day, two days, one year, two years, is going to come out too. Like Shaykh Maulana is saying, what? You cannot uh, hide a sword in your bag. You put a sword in your bag, it's going to show. You may hide to the rest of the people, but the ones that their hearts are open, they would know. Then they're watching from a distance. They're asking Allah sincerely. Change this one, please. He's falling into the hellfire. That one become more arrogant, more stubborn. They cry and they say, this is our amanat. But that one becoming more arrogant, more stubborn, more shaitanic, then the command is going to say, don't call them again. Let go, because they're causing so much harm to other people. He is your amanat, but he's our creature. Shev and his mirit. So we warn. And every sohbet that we speak is to speak about watching for your enemy. 
and not like let to your enemy to sit in your heart and to whisper to you every single day. Mm. When you know that your connection is weak, when you decide to listen to your waswasa more than you decide to listen to what the Shaykh has to say by tongue. Oh, uh, I read your sohbat. Not the same. You're reading my sohbat with your ego. I'm watching your videos with your ego. You have a problem. Huh? Why are you not saying, I have a problem? You're trying to hide it, it's going to show. We must get rid of this, especially uh, the doubt and the questioning and the criticism that you have for the Sheikh, for those ones who are guiding you. It is not your place to judge them. Judge yourself. Be busy with yourself. You will not understand. That time when the ego takes over, even if they explain to you from 104 books, you will not understand because your ego completely take over. You will not hear nothing. Everyone will understand, but you become more arrogant and more stubborn. This is all depends on you. Do you want to change or you don't want to change? Sincerely. You think the man who is sick spiritually and he sincerely he wants to change, you think Allah will leave him alone to shaitan? Impossible. But the one who may say, I sincerely want to change, but you know, every help is coming, but it is blocked because he blocked it. He kicked it. That time he changes. Who he has to blame? Can he blame Allah? Most people, they do. They blame Allah, they blame the Prophet, they blame their share. Saying, where are you? Where are we? Where is Allah? I'm left here all alone. Where are you? Hi, hi. Wake up a little bit. Because when you're questioning the presence of Allah, and the help of Allah, and you're questioning the help and the presence of your prophet and your sheikh, there's a time faith is quickly leaving you. Because you only think that you are existing, nothing else. Yes, we say, may Allah uh, protect us from that kind of confusion. But it is the job of confusion to confuse you. We say, may Allah protect us against shaitan. But it is the job of shaitan to mislead you. Don't think just because you say, Ya Rabbi, protect us, and shaitan is not going to come near you. Shaitan will come near because you are coming near to Allah. Shaitan is not going to come near to people who are very far away from Allah. Because you're coming closer, because you're in the way of haq, that's the time shaitan and your ego and other people's ego, they will attack you more. But that protection is knowing, understanding when you are in sohbat with your share, how these tricks and traps are and how to move according to that. You will know it is there. The danger is when a person thinks, I'm okay. Danger is when the person thinks, I'm okay, other people, they are not. Danger is when a person looks down on other people. Danger is when a person thinks that other people, they are planning to bring you down. Hmm. No. Your brothers and your sisters, they're not planning to take you down. Shaitan is, definitely. Your ego is. But not nobody here in our jamaat. So wake up. You may hide it. You may hide it for years. You may look to be the most uh, calm one. But we know what you are behind. <coughs> we know how you are privately. And you are going to show that true face. We don't want you to show that. We want you to get rid of it. But if you're not listening, what we can do? Prophets, uncles, they're not listening. What can he do? So, 
take lesson from this, you and me. Get rid of those things. You know how usually the doubt and everything enters into your heart? When really you have nothing to do. When you have nothing to do. When you're not working, or you have a lot of free time, and you're on that internet 24 hours. Yeah? You're not struggling against to your lower self. You're not fighting against the shaitan. You think everything is okay. Pretty soon you find yourself, you're fighting against those ones who love you most. You're attacking them. Because that's what shaitan wants you to do, to attack those ones who love you most. You start attacking them. One day you feel that you're completely right. You feel that you are the highest Lord. One day you feel so bad because you treat them like that. That's what shaitan wants you to do. Swing one to another because you have nothing better to do. The help is over there and you say, why I must go over there to help? Yeah. New style. Doesn't he know already? Why I have to go to him? Complete arrogance now. It's like Allah is saying, ask me. And you're saying, Allah, why I have to ask you? Don't you already know? You understand? And Allah says, ask me. Ask me even if you tear off your shoelaces, ask for me. Oh, of course, now new style, they're saying, oh, yeah. He wants to control everything, asking everyone to ask him. I said, no. If you know what to do, and all of so many of you are witness here, in the beginning, I will lead you the way. I will hold your hands and walk like this. After a while, I let go and I say, now you better know how to run. Correct? Because I have other things to do. I'm not going to hold your hand all the time. You know how to do this? Run, because you have other work to do. Everyone does. But this is a very evil sickness that is in people. Murids should watch this. It depends. If you sincerely want help, you will ask. When you don't want help, you will not ask. Then you're going to sit on it. One day, two days, one month, two months, one year, five years, seven years, ten years. Maybe in the first day, maybe in the first month, first year, the doubt is like this. But you know, it is the nature of these things. It gets what? Bigger and bigger. After a certain time, it's like, you know, cancer? Huh? Cancer, if you detect it early, there's a high chance that you may be cured, correct? But if it's too late, the doctors even say it is too late. We cannot do anything. Wait until the angel of death comes. Spiritual sickness is worse than that because it takes over very quickly. <coughs> and like I said, shaitan is aiming for us. He's not aiming at the people out there preparing now in this night like this to get drunk and to do all sorts of wrong, forbidden, evil things. Huh? They're going to run. So, wake up. This is for me and this is for you. May Allah forgive me. May Allah bless you. And make us all to wake up to become better ones, inshallah. Al-Fatiha. <laughs>